Lord be with you. Good morning. Good morning. As we gather here this morning, thank you for, for coming and for, uh, for blessing me with your presence and, and uh, pleasing God with, uh, with your presence in worship today. We're here to worship the Lord Jesus. We're here to uh, kind of delve into a, a difficult subject uh, today of forgive, forgiveness, of extending forgiveness and of accepting forgiveness. That's a tough, heavy lift here today, but Jesus is teaching us here in the gospel, uh, according to Matthew, uh, that we're to extend a lot more than, uh, than we want to bargain for. And uh, he has numbers, he uses a little numerology in his uh, explanation, but it's all about forgiveness today. So until that time, it's a tough text, but it's a wonderful day. You're here, we're here to worship Jesus, we're thankful for his word. Let's continue as we sing. The lyrics are in your, your bulletin. Sing along with us. Welcome to worship. Mercy. We love to forgive and accept forgiveness, but it's a, it's a tough, tough lift. Forgiveness is a, is a, a, a kind of a testimony, testimony, as it were, of our faith. And Jesus is teaching us here in the Gospel of Matthew that it is not just three times or seven times. It's much, much more than that. Again, a very, very hard, hard lesson to learn, but uh, easy because it comes from from God himself, from the word of God. Let's continue in worship. Oh. 
Lord, forgive us for our pride when our faith becomes a show. Trust in righteous deeds to hide all the stains below. We have judged your sons and daughters for the sin that is our own. May we now forgive each other forgiven through the blood of Christ where the sin rolls down into the blood and we're cleansed. Let's stand and greet one another saying peace, peace of the Lord be with you. Welcome. Hi, good to see you. Hi, Jane, good morning. Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Kate, would you, would you give a kind of a special thank you to Liz downstairs today? Just you know, greet her again. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, dear. Did you take care of that door downstairs? It's off. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. Hey, Ed. Good morning. You want me to say something? Hey, sir. People come to me and ask why it's locked, so when it's time to announce it, I'll mention for security reasons. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. Good to see you again. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Daniel. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning, brother. Good morning. I'm making my rounds. I'm making my rounds here. <laughs> <laughs> morning, good morning, dear. Good to see you. Good to see you, Raymond. Good morning. Good morning, man. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you for coming this morning. It's a, a great day in the faith, and we're thankful to God for. Uh, for a great church. By the way, the white door is going to be locked at 10 o'clock every Sunday downstairs, uh, just for safe sanctuary purposes, but uh, uh, we're going to require it to be locked. And then we'll, we'll reopen it uh, after the, the worship hour. But I just wanted to let you know that if, if you're running a little late and you want to slip in through the back door, you can't. <laughs> you just can't. You just can't. You're gonna, I'm going to have to watch you come in late. <laughs> 
the cameras. Yeah, just a, just a few announcements. Remember the uh, October 2nd, the youth group uh, has having their kickoff event. Make sure that uh, you're inviting, you're very inviting of youth for that evening. It's going to be fun. October 1st is coming very quickly. You saw a beautiful remnant of our car show this morning, a 1970 classic Jeep open sides that Eric brought. Come by this uh, after worship and take a look at it. It's it's quite a, a classic Jeep, a wonderful Jeep, and uh, uh, that's one of many cars that will be featured on the, the 1st of October. We're looking forward to our car show from 10 to 1, and then that evening, we've got our first board game night um, where we gather, hopefully we'll have uh, 50, 60 uh, game boarders, board gamers, whatever they call themselves, here, and we'll have snacks and uh, It'll be a great time, but we're opening up the campus that evening from 6 to 9, so we're, we're grateful for that, um, uh, that initiative that's coming to the church. I want to remind you on the 17th of October, come and join us for a, kind of a fun support of a Troop 79. We're going to honor John Miller, and we're going to honor Norm Long for their years of service, not just years of service to the Scouts, but a love for these young men. Uh, and uh, that, that is also in your bulletin, and uh, I want you to mark that on your calendar um, as we move forward. Um, keep filling your small church banks. We're going to be uh, collecting those next Sunday in, uh, after worship, and uh, that, all that money, all this stuff, all the proceeds from the car show, the board game night, uh, uh, from you putting money in these banks goes to the funding um, of, the, uh, of the roof and our roof funding project, uh, and it's, it's terrific. I wanted to give you one last update on the, the paraments, the colors that we use. Uh, Robin has been vigilant. These are, these are things that are on back orders, and I know many of you gave towards the paraments. We've purchased one, the green, but um, we're calling uh, this place three times a week and uh, on the, the status of these purchases that we've made all the way since May, and they say they're on back order, but they're coming, mm. uh, but uh, we're waiting on them, and we're patient because we're a church, and we're a Christian community, so we're patient, but Robin, uh, everybody's got to have a Robin Miller, believe me, trust me, because she's vigilant with it. So uh, those are the announcements today. I'm glad you're here. Let's stand, and Bill, would you lead us in the call to worship? Sure. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Out of the depths we cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voices. Let your ears be attentive to our cries for mercy. If you, Lord, kept record of our sins. <laughs> Who could stand, Lord? But you there is but with you there forgiveness I'm sorry. But with you there there is forgiveness that we can, with reverence, serve you. We will wait for the Lord. With our whole being, we will wait. And in his word, we put our hope. We will wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. Yes, more than watchmen wait for the morning. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem all of Israel from all their sins. Amen. You may be remain standing. We're going to sing. We're going to sing our first hymn, uh, number 390, and this is a great hymn of the faith, Forgive Our Sins As We Forgive. Let's sing. Hey 
our ushers to uh, come forward and move amongst us for uh, this morning's offering, his tithes and our offerings as we continue in worship. bounty. Thank you for the, the arm that extended into the plate, God, this wonderful offering, God, without strings attached. We give you the praise and the glory, God. We ask a blessing on its bounty. Let it spread in every, every area of our mission field, in this community, in this county, God. We're asking a blessing, and we're asking it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Today's scripture reading is from 
Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35. It's from the New Living Translation of the Bible and can be found on page 852 of your pew Bible. Please follow along. This is the parable of the unforgiving debtor. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned, to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please, be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me, and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man who he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First of all, I wanted to thank the, the township who gave us these uh, beautiful mums. The, the only problem is uh, your pastor's allergic to them. So <clears throat> if, I'm, if I'm up here and I'm... Uh, uh, Groping a little bit, it's because of that, but they are beautiful. (laughs) English missionary William Ward wrote this. He said, we are the most like beasts when we kill. We are the most like men when we judge. And we are the most like God when we forgive. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Many years ago, I used to be in what you might say was a very judging occupation as a police officer where in traffic enforcement, there could be much in the way of forgiveness that could be extended to someone or the choice not to forgive. The last couple of years of my short career were spent assigned on a highway detail patrolling the interstates of Charlotte. In those days, I had the option of being a beast, a man, or even godly many times in one all-encompassing eight-hour shift. (laughs) And over those years, I I got to interact with some very interesting people, some needing what I would label special forgiveness or grace. You've heard this story before, I'm sure. The chauffeur for the Pope, Pope Francis, was loading luggage for a trip the pontiff was taking one day. When he got packed up and jumped in the car, he noticed the Pope still standing on the curb. The driver said, excuse me, your your holiness, uh, uh, take your seat, please. We are ready to go. The Pope replied to his driver that he has never been allowed to drive the car, so could he possibly drive that day? (laughs) Well, I'm sorry, your holiness, the the driver replied. I can't can't let you do that. It's, It's about your safety. I would lose my job. Who's going to tell? asked the Pope with a smile. Well, reluctantly, the chauffeur 
gets in the back seat as the Pope climbs in behind the wheel. The driver, nervous now, is starting to regret the decision. The Pope pulls the large car out of the parking spot, gets out beyond the walls of the Vatican, and runs the car up to 205 kilometers. That is over 125 miles an hour. And I'll point out that the Pope is from Argentina, and that Juan Manuel Fangio, the famous Formula One racer of the 50s, was also from Argentina. The chauffeur pleads with the Pope to slow down. He screams in Italian, I'm going to do the, the best I can with this, Mio disfazze, o merde mio patre, perdo il lavaro. Huh? Which means, oh crap, I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> Suddenly, the Pope and his driver hear the, the sirens in the distance. The Pope finally pulls over and rolls the window down as the policeman approaches. The cop takes one look at him, goes back to his motorcycle, gets on the radio, asking to speak to the chief. The chief gets on the radio, and the cop tells him that he stopped a limo going 205 kilometers. So bust him, said the chief. Bust him. I don't think we want to do that, the cop responded. He's really important. We should, we should let him go. The chief exclaimed, all the more reason. Ticket him. No, I, I, I mean really important, said the cop with persistence in his voice. The chief then asked, who do you have there, the mayor? Bigger, the cop replied. A senator, perhaps? Bigger than that he replied. The president? Bigger, the cop said. Well, said the chief, who is it? I think it's God, the cop answered. Now the chief is even more puzzled and curious. What makes you think it's God, the chief asked. The cop responded, his chauffeur is the pope. How often do we forgive someone? Peter asks that question. Well, the rabbis of the day taught that people should forgive those who offend him or do harm against in any way, but only three times. Peter, trying to be especially generous, asked Jesus if seven, which is the perfect number, was enough. Was it enough times to forgive someone I mean, what is the limit of our forgiveness? You say to me, Danny, do you know how many times he has done this to me? I keep track of these things in my head. I keep score. You hear too far, too much, things like, I'll turn my life around. You'll see. I'll be a better husband. I'll be a better father, a wife, a mother, a friend. I'll get this done. I'll pay you back very soon. Jesus says 70 times 7. Well, that's 490 times you calculate quickly in your head. But this, says the interpreter's Bible, is only celestial math. Not done in one's head, but in one's heart. It is a problem in conduct, in attitude, rather than in math. You've heard the expression, hey, no worries, minor stuff, no sweat, right? Small stuff we can look past, no problem. But can we look past, I don't know, slander, or where wedding vows were pledged? Crimes in victimization happens. To listen to a slanderous story or tell one is a, a fascinating activity for many people. Is slander a problem amongst Christians? <laughs> you bet it is. The rabbis say three times. Peter says seven. 
So can I sue someone into oblivion after the seventh time, you ask? Can I go to the, to the media after the seventh time and get all this out in the open? Can I do it? Can I put it on TikTok and Instagram? Can I put it on Facebook? Jesus said there should be no limit to our forgiveness. And what about forgiving yourself? The dictionary says that forgiveness means to give up resentment or claim to requital. Now, I may have not have a lot of exceptional qualities. However, Donna will testify that one of them happens to be the ability to forgive, but that lesson did not come easy for me, you see. I worked all four years of my college life with three of those years working in a chemical plant. In the summers when I wasn't playing baseball in the Perky League, I was working into the the wee small hours of the morning at this plant. One day after a long hot shift, I walked up to the the locker room to take a shower, which is right outside the, the lab where I saw Jack, one of our maintenance men. He mentioned to me that The private contracting cleaning people were coming into the office to clean that night. He wanted me to to know since he knew I would be using the locker room. I happened to say something stupid and flip about the looks of one of those cleaning people who just happened to be his wife. Some lessons, folks, are learned the hard way. Let's just... Put it that way. I left that night knowing I had crushed Jack's spirit, hurt him deeply. Well, in a matter of days, with this thing looming on my conscience and my heart, I found Jack in the plant. I asked him to forgive me. No, I begged him to forgive me. I confessed to him that What I said was not just insensitive, but it was stupid. But this tough, burly, middle-aged husband and father looked at me and he said, I do forgive you, and I'll forget the whole thing. And pulled out a cross he had around his neck and showed me that it was the cross that explained his forgiving heart. Only the cross Since that day, I have tried extremely hard to do as Jack taught me to do through Christ. As Jesus taught his disciples to do, in Luke 17 and 5, it tells us that when the disciples heard this requirement of this unlimited forgiveness and faith Jesus was teaching, they asked him, Lord, show us how to increase our faith. The disciples' request were real. They wanted the faith necessary for such radical forgiveness. Faith, yes, faith, that complete trust and loyalty to God that results in a true willingness to do His will. Not the phony faith you put on to show off when times are good. It is a humble obedience to God's will. This is heavy lifting, as I said this morning. The right kind of faith, not so much the amount. A mustard seed, Jesus says, to uproot a tree and throw it into the sea if you wanted to. A faith that is alive and growing. I will never forget that day ever in my life. God is justified in saving a bad man like I was at the time, only as he then makes them better. Donna and I have played golf with our son-in-law, Richard, and our daughter, Elizabeth, from time to time. I admit I am a pretty orthodox person when it comes to the game of golf and the rules. Most of my years of playing golf, over 55, have been with guys wanting to beat my brains in. I've loosened up considerably, 
However, over the years, well, enter my redheaded daughter and my wonderful son-in-law into my orthodox world of stroke play with no mas. One particular round comes to mind where Elizabeth was becoming more and more frustrated as the day grew on. I could tell he, she came to the 17th hole, an easy par three. Libby hit her tee shot, which did not go very far. My wife looked at me and said, can we please give her a mulligan? Well, I walked over to the tee box and I handed her another ball. She hit a beautiful second tee shot into the green, had two putts, made par in the hole using that mulligan. She also played out her other ball, hacking it up and finally rolling out for a, a seven on that original ball. Well, we pulled up to the 18th tee, and I asked everybody for their scores from number 17 to put on the card. We got around to Elizabeth, who sheepishly said, Dad, I got a seven on the hole. Well, one of the things you will notice if you, you play golf is that when you are given your scorecard and a pencil, to keep score, many times the pencil has no eraser. Um, not at this golf course. This has an eraser. So I walked over to Richard and Elizabeth's scorecard on their cart, took my pencil and my eraser, and promptly erased the seven Richard had already put down on the card for Elizabeth's 17th hole, and I replaced it with a three. Kind of a a stretch, theologically, here, uh, not exactly numerological, but not seven, Elizabeth. Jesus said, but 70 times seven. How many times do I forgive, dear God, for these people who curse me, who defile my family and say wicked things about me? How many times do I have to forgive someone who owes me money? who wrongs me where I have the urge to hire an attorney and get what's coming to me. We have forgiveness through the blood of Jesus. When once we realize all that it costs God to forgive us, it means Calvary and nothing less. True forgiveness comes through the cross. Folks, we have the power within us to forgive and forget to erase the wrong? Or do we want to settle scores and remain on the rigid road of lessons learned from this world? No moss, you say. The debtor in our lesson borrows money from the king in the sum of the equivalent of $10 million, an outrageous Amount just to depict this incredible and unpayable amount for the purposes of Jesus' lesson here. But that same servant who owes this enormous debt is himself owed about $20. Now, in Bible times, there were serious consequences awaiting those who could not pay their debts. The debtor could go to jail. His family could be forced to work for them until the debt was paid. Once the debtor was in jail, they would squeeze this guy until he could sell off his land holdings or that relatives could pay the debt. Here the king is willing to forgive his debtor servant and the huge sum of money, but this cruel and selfish servant will not forgive his own debtor, insisting that, well, let's put it in today's terminology. We go forth with a lawsuit and go to trial and get as much as we can. Friends, Jesus taught so many lessons surrounding forgiveness, seven to be exact, of taking that eraser and wiping the score 
The sin debt off the page, off the card, replacing it with mercy and grace. We think of the forgiveness he showed and taught with the the paralyzed man lowered on the mat through the roof, Matthew 9. The woman caught in adultery, John chapter 8. The woman who anointed his feet with perfume, Luke 7. Peter for denying he knew Jesus, John 18. The, the, The criminal on the cross, Luke 23. And even the people who crucified him saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Just to speak of a few. Jesus taught to forgive frequently and demonstrated his willingness to forgive. So what about you? Are your words are your words of forgiveness true or are they cheap? Talk is cheap, friends. It costs nothing to promise to forgive then never forget it. Do people see Jesus in your forgiveness, in your heart? Jesus claims to be mighty and merciful and forgiving. He says to you and me, I see and care about the suffering of people. He claims and says to be wise and to be good. And he backs up those words with actions. Jesus walks the talk, as it were. In fact, Jesus Christ is the Word of God in action. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. In forgiving and being forgiven, people sense Christ in us. I'm convinced of that now. Let me close with this. Corey Ten Boom and her family lived in the Netherlands during World War II. And they happened to be a Gentile family, but they hid in their home and saved more than 100 Jews during the war. The penalty for that? Well, the Germans sent them to a a concentration camp, and all the family died there except Corey, who somehow survived. Well, she was speaking one night in West Berlin just after World War II. When she finished her talk, which was on forgiveness, a German man came up to her and said, Look at me. Look at me. And she looked at him and said, I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. He said, then look again. And suddenly, Corey, Corey had flashbacks to the concentration camp. She knew his face. He was the guard. He was the guard who raped her sister and savaged her, and her sister died. That's who he was. In that moment of truth, Corey said to herself, I had to decide whether to extend forgiveness, extend, extend forgiveness. I had to decide whether the forgiveness extended to me should be extended through me to this guard who raped my sister. And he stared at her. He said, if you forgive me, I'll accept your Christ. She said, I do forgive you. He said, I accept your Christ. When you realize all that it costs God to forgive you and me. Amen.
What good would a, a forgiveness sermon and a text be without a confession of pardon? So let's turn, remain seated to number 890 in your hymnal. You'll read the dark lettering and I'll finish with a prayer. Say with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of of the Holy Spirit, keep you and me in eternal life. Say amen. 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 We come to a time of prayer and we, we celebrate this day of worship, but we know there are so many things to pray about, to pray for, to ask God to, uh, to take this burden from us. It could be a relationship. It could be uh, um, an unwillingness to extend forgiveness. It could be a, an unwillingness to accept someone's forgiveness. All these kinds of thoughts and emotions are in this room today. I know that. But what do we pray about today? Who do we pray for? Who do we want to lift up today in, in prayer? I'd like to say a prayer for the Ukraine. I uh, recently did a DNA test and found out I'm part Ukrainian. Okay. So we're going to pray. Let's pray for peace for them. Amen. Amen. And welcome. Thank you for coming. Donna. Please pray for Kara Strelsky, our good friend that comes <clears throat> here. She's not here today. She's struggling with some health issues, and they're, of course, running tons and tons of tests. So for Kara. Thank you. Others, prayers, celebrations, joys. What are, we, what are we thankful for today? Paul, welcome back, my friend. You got your, uh, your bike trip beard on. Good, good for you, man. Here, take the mic. Welcome back. Um, prayers for my cousin Arnold, who passed this past week. Um, earlier in his life, he was, um, his life was ruined by drugs. Um, he eventually got cleaned up. Uncle Arnold, who had a drug problem. I have a craze. Yeah, please do. Please come. Yeah. Liz, I don't think, I don't know if you mentioned it. Liz Dodd started today as our nursery attendant. And Amen. there's a list in the back because we always need a volunteer. So if you could, anybody could sign up, that would be great. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. Liz Dodds is with us now as a another staff person, and uh, we're hoping that young families come out and decide to join us in worship. They've got a beautiful place to go down there to and some wonderful people in which to, uh, to mix and mingle. Jan? I just have a celebration, too. Ray and I are celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary tomorrow. Oh, welcome. Good, great, terrific, 30. Let's clap. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to pray for you and you. We're going to pray for you. Yeah. Yeah. And another celebration and praise that you were born. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm 67, Gary. I just, I, I told Gary I'd name it 67 years old. I'm always, what did Hyman Ross say in The Godfrey? I'm always accurate about my age. And you know, if you study that movie, you look on that cake, the number 67. He didn't live much longer than that. But anyway, that's another story. 67. Thank you very much. Thank you. Others. All the way in the back. Vanessa, I'm coming. We're a praying church, so this stuff works. I just want to thank everyone.
everyone for the support and blessings. It's just overwhelming. Yeah, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Tim's a little under the weather today. Otherwise, he'd have been our bass player today. But uh, we'll pray for Tim as well, our lay leader. Let's go to the Word of God then. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, we are uh, so conscious of our lives. We're so conscious of our own willingness to forgive or unwillingness to forgive. Forgive us that flaw that we have in our personhood. (laughs) Forgive us, God, when we can't accept someone's forgiveness. Look them in the eye and say, you are forgiven and accept it, and I'm going to forget it as well, and then move on from that, not ruminate over that. You are a great God who erases the slate clean. Lord, you you say in your word, you have no remembrance of sin. You don't keep score. We do because we are mortal, and we sin, and we flaw, and and, uh, fall short of your glory every day. So forgive us. God, you've heard the petitions of Ukrainian people. They need you, Father, more than ever now, God, and you are going to, you're going to do a miracle. We're going to wait for that miracle, God. We hate war. No one loves war, God, but we, we know that you are in their midst, and you know, God, that, uh, that we are continuing to pray, God, we're on our knees. That's your favorite place for us is on our knees. We celebrate uh, birthdays, Lord. We celebrate new hires and, and comforting um, uh, thoughts and a wonderful plan, Lord, for our children during worship. It's just an hour, but it's such a great place. We come, we worship, our children are cared for, God, and bring on the young families, God, into worship. Bring them back to the church, Lord. No more excuses. No more alibis, Lord. Bring them back and, and allow us, Lord, to, to uh, each one reach one, Lord, and invite them in, into our fellowship. We're praying for sick people. We're praying <clears throat> for Kara. We're praying for... Uh, the results of testing, Lord, we're, we're praying for, uh, for good health and, and those that aren't feeling well, Lord, we're, we're praying for uh, uh, families who have experienced loss today, Lord. And in your mercy now, in these quiet moments, Lord, uh, help us to lift those that we haven't uh, lifted up publicly right now. Lord Jesus, you taught us to pray <clears throat> when your friends said, we don't know how to pray, what to pray for. You taught this prayer. Say with me, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God heard our prayer. Thank you so much. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn number 557. Bless be the ties that bind. Let's sing. Kindred minds is like to that of 
Jesus said seven times 70. Don't do the math. It's not about the math. It's about the heart. Scripture isn't about math. It's about the heart. Go. Forgive. Counsel. Accept forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.